plus current. So, ang definition ng current is, it is the electron flow in a conductor. So, dito sa diagram, uh, yung electron mo, kaya gumagalaw dyan sa may conductor na yan kasi yung positive uh, pole ng battery, ina-attract yung mga electron na yun. Kaya siya gumagalaw dyan sa may conductor na yan. Okay? So, ang tawag mo dun sa flow ng electron ay current. Okay? At sa isang segundo, ang dami daw ng electron na dumadaloy ay equal sa 6.242 times 10 to the 18 electron. So, dun sa 1 seconds na yun, ito yung dami ng electron na yun. At ang equivalent nun ay equal sa 1 ampere. Okay? So, yung unit na ampere, that is the unit for current. Kasi ang unit ng current ay ampere. So, kaya naging ampere ang unit niyan kasi dahil dun sa scientist na nakaimbento niyan. That is Andre Marie Ampere. So, in honor sa kanya, kaya ang unit ng current ay ampere. Okay? So, dito sa diagram na ito, uh, visualization kung paano gumagalaw yung electron sa conductor. So, kailangan mo ng battery kasi e, yan yung energy na kailangan mo para gumalaw yung electron na yan. Okay? So, kapag kinabit mo yung conductor sa baterya, so, yung outer electron sa valence electron ng uh, uh, valence shell ng ng conductor mo, may excite nitong energy na ito. So, pag na-excite yung electron na yan, tatalon yan dun sa susunod na atom niya. So, dahil magre-repel sila, tatalon ulit yung isa, tapos tatalon ulit doon, tapos tatalon ulit doon. So, ibig sabihin, yung electron mo are in motion. Diba ang definition ng electricity is electrons in motion. So, that's how the electron moves from one atom to another atom. Okay? Now, the formula ng current ay equal sa I is equal to Q over T. So, in terms of derivative naman, ang formula nito ay I as a function of time is equal to derivative of charge over derivative of time. Okay? So, kung ito ay mumultiply mo from the other side, makukuha ko dQ is equal to I function of time dt. So, you integrate both sides, makukuha mo na yung formula para sa charge. So, ang Q mo, this is equal to the integral of I as a function of time dt. Okay? Kung saan ang I mo is current, ang Q mo ay charge, and T mo is time. So, ibig sabihin, ang unit dapat ng charge mo ay coulomb. Tapos, ang unit ng time mo dapat seconds. So, ibig sabihin, coulomb over seconds ay equal sa ampere. Okay? So, A. So, may conversion dito. Ang 1 coulomb ay equal sa 6.242 times 10 to the 18 electrons. Okay? Now, let's answer some problem regarding this topic para maintindihan mo kung paano ginagamit yung mga formula. So, sa problem number 1, determine the time required for 4 times 10 to the 16 electrons to pass through the imaginary surface if the current is 5 mA. So, ibig sabihin, ang tanong, kung 5 mA daw ang current, uh, anong oras daw uh, yung oras na na-acquire sa pagpasok nung, o sa paggalaw nitong 4 times 10 to the 16 electrons na ito? That is the question. So, ang formula ng current is I is equal to Q over T. So, we are required to find the time. So, ang magiging formula ng time ay equal to Q over I. So, the problem is, given yung current pero wala pang charge. So, ibig sabihin, kaya binigay yung conversion kanina na 1 coulomb is equal to 6.242 times 10 to the 18 electrons kasi yun yung gagamitin mo para makuha mo yung equivalent nun sa charge. Okay? So, yung given, that is number of electrons, that is 4 times 10 to the 16 electrons, you multiply it by the conversion 1 coulomb over 6.242 times 10 to the 18 electrons. So, the electrons will cancel out. Okay? So, ang lalabas sa sagot sa iyo dyan ay 0.641 times 10 to the negative 2 coulomb or that is equal to 6.41 millicoulomb. Okay? So, you substitute the calculated data to this formula, you will get... 
26.41 times 10 to the negative 3 coulomb over 5 times 10 to the negative 3 ampere. So, ang sagot na lalabas sa iyo doon ay 1.282 seconds. Okay? Now, for problem number 2, uh, the charge in a wire is known to be Q sub T. Uh, Q as a function of time is equal to 3T squared minus 6 coulomb. So, find the current. So, in this part, we're going to use the derivative in order for us to get the current. Kasi ang function ng ibinigay sa'yo. So, ang, ang formula ay as a function of time is equal to the derivative of charge over dt. So, you get the derivative of 3t squared minus 6. So, ang derivative ng 3t squared ay 6t. Okay? Tapos, ang derivative naman ng constant ay 0. Kaya 60 minus 0. So, the final answer is 60 ampere. Okay? Okay, let's um, answer problem number 3. Ang tanong ay, find the current that corresponds to the function of charge. Uh, Q as a function of time is equal to 10 cosine 170 pi t millicoulomb. So, ibig sabihin, ang ibinigay sa iyo ay function ng Q as a function of time. So, in order for us to get the current, we have to take, uh, we have to get the derivative of this equation. So, ang I sub t, or I as a function of time, is equal to dq over dt. So, we have to get the derivative of 10 cosine 170 pi t. So, ang gagamitin mo na formula dito ay yung formula sa derivative na udb plus pdu. Okay? Ito. So, we let u na equal sa 10. Tapos, ang derivative ng du mo, that is 0. Kasi derivative ng constant ay 0. So, we let b is equal to cosine 170 pi t. Okay? Tapos, ang derivative nito, derivative ng cosine 170 pi t is equal to negative sine 170 pi t. And then, you get the derivative of the, the u. Uh, the B. So, ang kalalabasan nun, 170 pi T, that is equal to 170 pi DT. Kaya naging 170 pi. So, evaluate mo yan, ang kalalabasan ng DB mo, that is equal to negative 170 pi sine 170 pi T. Now, you substitute all of those data dito sa formula na ito, you will get 10 times negative 170 pi sine 170 pi t plus cosine 170 pi t times 0. So, this term is already 0. So, ang lalabas sa sagot sa iyo dyan ay equal sa negative 1700 pi sine 170 pi t milliampere. So, ito yung current as a function of time. Okay? Now, our next topic naman natin is voltage. Ang definition ng voltage ay it is the difference in electric potential between two points. So, a potential difference of one volt exists between two points if one joule of energy is exchanged in moving one coulomb of charge between the two points. So, the unit of measurement volt was chosen to honor Alessandro Volta. So, ang ibig sabihin lang nun, uh, kailangan mo ng energy na 1 joules para itong 1 coulomb ng charge na ito ay makapag-travel from this point up to that point. At yung na-travel mo from the starting point up to the, the end point, that is your voltage. Okay? And that is equal to 1 volt. So, ibig sabihin, ang 1 volt ay equal dun sa 1 joules of energy applied dun sa 1 coulomb of charge. Okay? So, kaya ang unit ng voltage ay volts kasi uh, in honor sa scientist na naka nito. That is Alessandro Volta. Okay? Now, the formula for the voltage is equal to work over Q. Or, in terms of derivative naman, the formula for voltage that is equal to the derivative of work over dQ. And, Kapag waveform naman ang ibinigay sa iyo, ang B mo is equal to amplitude sine omega t, where omega is equal to 2 phi f. 
Okay? Kung saan ang B mo ay voltage, ang Q mo ay charge, ang W ay work, ang omega, that is angular velocity, ang F ay frequency, at ang A ay amplitude. Okay? So, sa conversion, ang 1 CPS ay 1 hertz. Ang ibig sabihin ng CPS ay cycle per second. Okay? So, dito, ang unit dapat ng work mo, naka-joules. At ang unit dapat ng charge mo, naka -coulom. So, ibig sabihin, joules per coulomb ay equal sa volts. Okay? So, Nagiging komplikado ito sa topic ng circuit analysis 1 kasi na-encounter mo na itong formula na ito sa physics 2. So, yung work naman, na-encounter mo naman yung formula ng work mo sa physics 1. Kasi ang formula ng work sa physics 1 ay force okay, times the distance. Okay? Tapos si Q, marami yan. Uh, pwede pumasok dyan si electric field. Kasi ang formula ng electric field ay F okay, over Q. Marami din formula si Q pag pinasok mo sa magnetism. So, ibig sabihin, huwag kang mag... Uh, uh, tumingin lang sa formula na B is equal sa work over Q kasi maraming kaakibat na formula ang work at ang Q mo din. So, ibig sabihin, uh, pwedeng ipasok yung topic na to sa iba-ibang topic sa P6, 1, at saka P6, 2. So, ibig sabihin, pwede ka makabuo ng bagong formula using the formula na daladala ng bawat variable na yun. Depende yun kung saan sitwasyon siya ilalagay. Okay? So, kaya humihirap yung mga problem na sinasagutan mo dito. Sometimes, meron ka makikita na may given na velocity pero wala naman doon sa formula na, na, na ibinigay. Yung pala, you have to derive the formula in order for you to uh, use that variable. Okay? So, that is one tip. So, huwag kang mag lang sa formula na yan kasi pwedeng tumakbo yung formula sa mas maraming for uh, mas maraming variable depende kung saan sitwasyon siya ilalagay. Okay? Now, let's answer some problem regarding this topic. So, sa problem number one, find the potential difference between two points in an electrical system if 60 joules of energy are expanded by a charge of 20 coulomb between these two points. So, ibig sabihin, ang given sa iyo ay ener uh, energy or work, that is 60 joules, and the value of charge is 20 coulomb. So, the formula for the voltage that is equal to B is equal to work over Q. So, that is 60 joules over 20 coulomb. So, ang lalabas sa sagot sa iyo ay 3 volts. Okay? Now, for the second problem, ang tanong, if the voltage in a circuit is given by uh, voltage as a function of time is equal to 170, sine 37070, what are the amplitude and cycles per second? So, kung mapapansin mo, dun sa general equation kaninang ibinigay sa formula, eto si 170, that is the amplitude. Tapos, itong 377, that is the omega. Okay? So, kaya niya binigay sa iyo yung formula kanina ng general equation ng voltage. Okay? Amplitude sine omega t. So, ibig sabihin, dahil ang tinatanong ay amplitude, automatic na ang value ng amplitude mo ay 170 volts. Okay? Ang amplitude, that is the voltage peak ng uh, uh, waveform ng uh, voltage mo. Okay? So, kapag hindi mo alam yung general form nun, wala na baka mag-compute ka na mag-compute yung pala nasa harapan mo na yung sagot okay so in order for you to get the uh, frequency okay so kailangan ang formula ng frequency yung makuha mo ay equal sa omega over 2 pi kasi ang omega formula ay equal sa 2 pi f okay So, in order for you to get the formula for F, 
I-divide both sides by 2 pi. That's why ang magiging formula ng F mo ay omega over 2 pi. So, yun yung kalalabasan dito. So, ito yung F mo. Okay? So, ito si omega over 2 pi. So, ang omega mo, that is 377, you divide it by 2 pi, you will get 60 CPS or that is 60 hertz. Okay? Okay, the next topic is DC voltage sources. So, ang symbol ng DC source ay ito. Ayan. So, yung malita pa ah, negative. Dapat yung malaking pa ah, positive. Okay? This is the symbol of DC sources. Now, saan ba nakakakuha ng mga DC sources? So, una, sa battery. Okay? These are the common DC source. So, ito yung mga sample niyan. Yung mga AA, AAA, tsaka yung mga battery ang ginagamit sa relo. Okay? Sa calculator. Yan. Those are... Uh, batteries. So, may dalawang klase. Ang battery, may primary at saka secondary batteries. When you say primary batteries, ito yung mga non-rechargeable batteries. Okay? Pag secondary batteries naman, these are the rechargeable batteries. Okay? So, meron pa, katulad nyan, solar cell. So, ang mga solar panel, ang output nun ay DC. Okay? So, pwede ka makakuha ng mga DC source sa solar panel o solar cell. Isa pang pwede ka makakuha ng DC source ay sa DC generator. Kasi ang output ng DC generator ay DC din. And, uh, the most common is power supplies. Okay? So, ito yung mga usual na ginagamit natin sa laboratory. So, ang output ng power supplies are DC. Okay? Now, the next topic is conductors, insulators, and semiconductors. So, ang conductors, these are materials through which charges move easily. So, ang mga example nito ay silver, copper, gold, and aluminum, and so on. Okay? So, ang pinakamagandang conductor talaga ay silver. Since mahal ito, kaya ang sumunod sa um, uh, table niya ay si copper. So, kaya ang usual na ginagamit nating insulator ay copper. Kasi, uh, mura na siya. Hindi siya ganun uh, kamahal kaysa sa silver. Tapos, uh, this metal is very abundant. Okay? So, yung sumunod ay insulator. Ang definition ng insulator are materials that do not conduct electricity. So, ang mga example nito ay glass, uh, porcelain, plastic, rubber, and so on. So, yung usual na ginagamit natin ay rubber. So, sometimes, kombinasyon ng plastic and rubber ang mga insulator na ginagamit. Okay? So, the last term is semiconductors. So, ang semiconductors have unique electrical properties. They are neither good conductors nor good insulators. So, ang mga example nito ay silicon and germanium. So, these are the elements that choose in a semiconductor um, components. So, ang semiconductor parang nasa gitna. Parang pwede siyang maging conductor, pwede siyang maging insulator. Okay? So, the next topic is ammeter and voltmeter. So, ang ammeter are used to measure current levels and voltmeters ay mga potential difference between two points. So, ito yung tura ng ammeter at saka voltmeter. Okay? Tapos, may multi-tester ka dito o multimeter na pwedeng magsukat ng current and voltage. So, ang ammeter is used to measure current tapos ang voltmeter mo na uh, meter mo naman is used to measure voltages. Okay? So, I guess that's it. Uh, sana marami kayo natutunan. Uh, See you again for another tutorial. Until next time, bye-bye.